Okay, Elemental fans. Um, so uh, yesterday I put up a tutorial which I used Bricks Builder for to create this kind of uh, widget here where we've got a blob background. We've got a 24-bit PNG mast image in the center of that. Uh, and we've got the a mask on that using the same SVG shape so that we can animate this uh, girl in this case here. Well, what we're doing is we're actually clipping with the blob shape at the bottom, um, but we're not clipping anything at the top. Uh, and the way we do that is we put a uh, absolutely positioned blob shape in the background, which is our blue background here. Uh, we then use the same shape, uh, but in Adobe Illustrator, we modify that shape to add a fully enclosed rectangle at the top here. Uh, and we use that as our mask image and uh, we then uh, position that at the bottom so that uh, it's masking the container that's got this image in it and then we can animate the image up and down uh, and it looks like it's masked here which it is because I can actually see the background through there but she still manages to pop out through the top so that was what I built in Bricks Builder um, now I did say that it really is just understanding some HTML and some CSS uh, and using some SVGs. The thing is that I found when I tried to do this in Elementor, which this is Elementor, so it is doable in Elementor, uh, there's just a few little extra considerations and steps because of the way Elementor creates the HTML code, uh, adding additional wrappers, etc., uh, and also putting some defaults onto containers or divs uh, which aren't HTML defaults, and you've got to deal with that as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but just a very quick summary. Uh, you can look back at the other video if you want the detail on how to do this, but in a very quick summary, what we did, is we created a blob using this uh, blobmaker.app tool, and we just made it nice and pointy, and just keep rolling the dice until we got something that we're actually happy with. And we once we had something we're happy with, we're not worried about the size. As you can see here, it's got a view box with the dotted lines. Is the outer edges because we're going to we're going to resize this in Adobe Illustrator anyway. All we need is the shape. So once you're happy with the shape, then you save your shape, and that's what we work with. So we then went over into Illustrator. We got our shape. We made a 200 by 200 um, artboard. So let me just double check that's correct. Yes, the 200 pixels. Actually, we shrunk that down because of the size of the shape, and we got a 200 pixel. It was a 200 pixel by 200 pixel artboard. Um, and we shrunk it down because of the shape size. We then made sure that that shape went all the way to the edges because this is going to become our view box in SVG. We don't want any spacing on the side there because we want we want that shape to go all the way to the edge of the container that it's in. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we do that here. Otherwise, it's going to uh, give it some additional spacing on the sides. Uh, I then shrunk my viewport down or my artboard down to the very top of that and made sure it's a whole number because uh, part numbers do create some crazy things in Illustrator with adding and adding uh, extra uh, pixels, etc. Then we saved that as an SVG, making sure we selected style elements so we get classes. So that's the first blob. The second blob, we just basically took the same one here. So I took the same blob shape, extended the artboard upwards, uh, created a blackout area here, and just made it black. Um, and what that's going to do is, when we use this as our mask, any of the mask within this black area is going to be visible. Anything outside of that is not going to be visible. So that was the two masks that we created. So let's head back over here, and that's pretty much the result we ended up with. Um, and let's head over to Elementor scratch page to have a look at how this is done in Elementor. So the first thing we've done is we've just got a container here, uh, which I've set to, it's left this box, I should say, and set that to a row, uh, because I want to lay out three columns here, just so I've got some spacing to work with. Um, then I've added three containers inside that, and each of the containers, all I've done is set them to full width. That's the only thing I've changed in Elementor. Uh, any container that you put inside something else in Elementor, you should always make full width. This should be the default. 
box should be the selection, but full width should be the default because when you put a container inside something else, you don't need to box the contents to the maximum page width because it's already inside something else. So all you're doing is adding an extra DOM element, not getting additional uh, value out of it, and it's an additional element that you need to target with your CSS. So it really should be full width by default, but that's another point, that's another issue. All right, so um, we add a container here. So I'm gonna to go to the middle container because that's where we've created our structure here. And on that middle container, uh, let me see if I put anything on there. I don't think I have. No, because that's just a, a container to wrap our a blog mark here. So if I wanted that to have some padding there, for example, I could add a padding of, say, 30 pixels there. And there are 30 pixels around there. And the contents inside will shrink accordingly. Uh, so it's really just a container to contain our blob uh, mast widget thing that we're creating here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that back off. So if you take it off, this is the thing that one of the things that annoys me in Elementor. When you take off your padding, that's the same as putting 10. Okay, it, it's not really obvious and it creates some confusion as to why I've got extra spacing. It should be zero. It should be no padding by default, but it's adding this default 10 to everything that you've got to remove if you don't want it. And in most cases, you don't want it. So um, yeah, I'm not sure why they did that. Anyway, that's another point again. So if we look at our top level block, so a BEM block, uh, which is basically standard naming with dashes or no dashes, uh, that is our BEM block. And that is going to be our main container. So on this element here, it is a container set to full width. And uh, on the advanced, we named the uh, navigator, um, I guess the elements in the navigator here, the same as the class that we're putting on to there, just to make it make more sense to us. So we've got to put that class on there. Uh, then we've got our blob mask. I've called this a figure. This is another issue. Uh, in Elementor, you cannot get a figure. There's no way to get it, and I'll show you why shortly. But in this case, I've just made that a container, which is just, again, full width. And we just put the same class name as we've got on the navigator here, where this is a BEM element for that block, which is underscore underscore figure. Uh, inside there, I've got an image, which we don't need a class on, so I'm going to target that separately. Uh, and then we've got a blob, which is our background, which is actually an HTML box. And uh, in our advanced, we've got the BEM element here. So we've got a block and then underscore underscore blob. And that's our structure, okay? And that's all we need for the structure of this to work. Um, and then down here, we've got another HTML box, which is just our CSS. In reality, this is only for demonstration. I would never do this. Uh, I would take that CSS out and put it into whatever you use for your CSS. So if you use a code manager, stick it in your code manager. If you're putting it in site settings, custom CSS, put it in there. Uh, whatever you prefer, um, do not put it on the page. It makes no sense to put CSS like this on the page. It just makes it more confusing to find these things down the track. Um, coming back to our structure here. So in our structure, one of the things I could not do is in the image here, uh, I could not change this to a figure. There is no way I can change this to a figure. I look through all the settings. There's nothing to change an image to a figure. There's no figure element. Let me have a look. No, there's no figure element. Uh, there's the container, which is just a container, which is either boxed or, or not boxed. Uh, you can change the container. Uh, you can change the container's um, HTML tag, but they just give you this limited list. There's no custom, there's no figure. You can't put a figure in an editor in Elementor in the UI. You can do it with a, with an a HTML block, but then you lose the editing for the stuff that's inside it. So in this case, I've just gone with a basically a div, and I've called it a figure. Uh, and semantically, it should be a figure. In HTML semantics, a figure is a positional piece of content that has an image, and that's exactly what this is. Uh, but I can't do that. Right, so it would be really, really cool. Actually, just as if anyone from Elementor sees this, it'd be really, really cool in our layout here if we just had another one of these 
which is just a raw DOM element. And if you could put that onto the editor and on that DOM element, you can make that whatever tag you want. You can, and when you do that, I don't want to see any wrappers whatsoever. I just want to see that DOM element. Um, all of the containers, widgets, everything that we stick onto the editor in Elementor has widgets around it. And, um, as, sorry, it has um, wrappers and whatnot, which I'll show you shortly. Actually, I'm going to show you now because I'm going to, it, it affects how we do our CSS. So the thing is, let's look at the DOM. So if we look at the DOM here, we go back to a, up to our top. That's the image, it's a figure, that's our, that's our block there, right? So the uh, blog BG and mask is our first BEM block. So that's just a container which I've told to be full width. So it's got this class here, it says it's econ full. And then that's okay because with this one, when you set the full, it doesn't add any wrappers underneath it. When you set it to uh, boxed, it adds an additional div underneath that, which is your inner container, okay? which is how it boxes, okay? And you don't get to control that in the, the UI, it just adds it uh, as part of the code, okay? In this case, it hasn't because I've set it to full, uh, but then we've got our image here, which is another full width container, okay? And because, again, that's a full width container, there's no wrapper after that. But then we get to our first element, which is the uh, image widget, and what we get when we put an element on there is we get a div, which is our widget container as our wrapper, and then we get the actual image. Okay, so every, if we just put an image on, and all we want is an image, IMG, uh, on the editor, we don't just get an IMG, we get a div, which is our widget, we get a div, which is our uh, wrapper, our container, and then we get our image. So we need to be aware of that when we create our CSS. Okay, so that's the reason that it's a little bit different in Elementor uh, because you need to be aware of the fact that it's adding more than what you would expect to the DOM. Okay, so we go down to our next one, which is our blob. That I've used an HTML widget for. You need, again, if we could just have a raw code. We can just put a widget on there where all we want, all I want is this SVG. All I want to do is put that SVG code there, but to put this on the editor, I've got to put a HTML widget, which adds that widget, which then adds a widget container, and then it adds our SVG, which is a code I've pasted inside the HTML widget. So we need to be, again, we need to be aware of this when we're targeting with CSS. All right, so those are the main differences that we've got to contend with. So we head back over to Elementor and have a look at how I've structured this. So look at the CSS. Um, most of this is the same as what I did in uh, the Bricks Builder, uh, except for anything I've done different with Elementor, I've just put this little comment above it. So because the Elementor editor only has one container, there's no div that you can put on there or anything like that, we need to make sure we override a few things. We're gonna set our width to 100%. Elementor for a uh, full width container has a var dash dash width, which is 100%. But I don't know where it's getting that from. I don't know if that's going to change under certain circumstances. I don't know where that variable comes from. So I explicitly want to make sure that this is always 100% and not rely on that variable. Uh, I don't want the 10 pixel padding on everything. So I'm going to remove that 10 pixel padding here. Okay, so our blob mask here. Uh, with our main container is going to remove that 10 pixel padding there. You can do it in the UI if you want to, but I just put it in the CSS so it's clear, crystal clear what you're actually doing. All right, and then we've got this one here. We've got to also make the uh, container underneath it 100%. I think I'm dealing with that further down anyway because I found it's affecting more than that. So we've got to tell the container within that to be 100%. Then we've got to look at our blob mask. Actually, let me just check that. I think that might be a hangover from when I was uh, looking at it first. What am I looking at there? Blob mask, econ, blobbing mask. Where's my blob mask? You just take that out and see what happens. Yeah, no, we do need it. So then we need to make sure that the 
Under our blob and mask, we've got a container. So where are we there? Our blob and mask, blob and mask. Ah, uh, for the element here, I could have probably just put it on there. So if I just put it on there, the I might just do that. I might just make this clearer. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to put that on the actual figure here. Ah, uh, there we go there. So it's going to take the padding off that. There we go. So it makes more sense. I'll put it there. Because that's the actual next container down anyway. So, all right. So effectively on our uh, widget container underneath the Bob mask, we have to make the um, width 100%. This is standard, um, but that's the blob, absolute position, stick it at the bottom, width of 100% and Z index of minus one, so it sticks it behind the uh, image and at the bottom. Um, this one here is the um, blob. So the blob goes into a container. So we've got our blob container here. Uh, that's not it, that's the bigger. There's our blob there. So what we wanted to have is make sure that this container was flex um, that's containing the SVG. Otherwise, we get some weird spacing on there. But because, again, Elementor adds the uh, container here, and then it's got the widget container underneath that, and then it's got our SVG, we need to make this one the uh, display of flex, but we can't target that in the UI, so we have to do that in the CSS. So what I'm doing is grabbing our uh, class name here and the elemental container that's under that and setting the display to flex. We don't do that. We end up with this weird spacing. Let's have a look at it. See that there? We've got the, the bottom of this woman's arm here is about 10 pixels below the blob because the blob's moved up by 10 pixels. I'm not sure why. I haven't bothered to figure that out as to why when it's a block, we get this extra 10 pixels. Uh, and when it's flex, we don't. But... Uh, Let's, uh, let's not worry about that. Let's just know that we're going to make it a flex, otherwise we get that extra weird padding um, or margin, whatever it is that's pushing that uh, blob up. Okay, the rest of this was covered in the other one, which is basically our mask image um, to mask around that whole blob, uh, the top part of it and the bottom part of the mask being shaped. Uh, and then we've got... The rest of it, I think, is pretty much the same as it was in the other video. But I'll just right quickly run through that. So what we're doing here is we're getting our figure, which is the wrapper around this girl, and we're using a mask image, which is this image here that we created. So the SVG we created in Illustrator. So we're using that as our mask image for the wrapper around this image. Okay, and that's and then we're masking that, setting it to cover so it fills the entire space and setting the position to the bottom so it sits at the bottom so the rest of that mask can extend beyond the top of this if it needs to um, and, uh, and allow for whatever the top of that to be visible. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, justifying the content as the center, so our, our center image Oh, yes, yeah. so the idea of that is this image in the center here, we can control that with this variable. So if I want it more, more uh, blob on the sides, I'll just make that say 70%. And it makes more blob visible on the sides because it makes our uh, girl, in this case, only 70% of the full width. And because it's in the center, we give uh, left and right spacing to that. So let's put that back on 90. You want it right to the edge, you can make it 100. And see now her back goes right to the edge up here. Her hair goes right to the edge up there. Okay, so that's that's how you control that. Now, what we're doing with the uh, so that's pretty much all of the masking. We've got a blob in the background. We've got a mask on a container that contains an image, uh, and that mask is what's clipping the uh, the image. That gives us then the flexibility to transform this image and still keep the clipping because its parent container is what's being clipped, not the image itself. Uh, so we set our width to our variable of image width, which we set at the top there. We're going to translate Y by 16 pixels by default, and returning time is going to take me 0.3 seconds. So that's uh, take my mouse, put my mouse over there, return back to being 16 pixels translated. Uh, and then when we're hovering the um, container, 
on the image, translate it back to zero over 0.7 seconds. So if I hover, it goes back to zero over 0.7 seconds. So that's pretty much it. And then we've got our coloring of the background blob using the fill. So we, we, we in our mask, let me just grab that there. What we can see here, and there's lots of ways you can do this, but if we look at the actual blob SVG, in here, what we've done here is we've set the path to have a class of our uh, blob BG mask, and it's called F SVG, uh, is the class we gave it. So we can target that class down here, and we can set our fill on that, okay? Uh, now, what we can do up here is we can change that fill. Uh, so if I change that to say secondary, you see our color of our blob changed because we're targeting the fill for that SVG. So that's pretty much it. Um, I, because this is a little bit more difficult than um, doing it in uh, the Bricks Builder, it, not a whole lot more. It's just that you need to be aware of some of the extra things that Elemental is adding. Uh, but because it is different, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, export this page as a template and make it available uh, in the description and you can import it and start playing with it from there. Then you just need to create your own uh, SVGs uh, for the blobs, your own images, uh, and then away you go. Okay, so I hope you like this. Uh, if you do, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thank you.